And I just want to explain some, explain like why I think that Vivi is ahead of the curve, um, as well as a timeline for adoption, because I, I feel like Vivi is very early in a bunch of um, pretty crazy niche markets that are that I feel like will soon explode. In my perspective, I think that virtual reality, VR, has always been in the minds of consumers to be the way that we enter into this futuristic space. And I think the main reason for that is because of the designers from films uh, often depict that virtual reality future by way of a headset, something like the Oculus, or if you look at like the Ready Player One movie. I think because of that's the, that's the way that it's depicted in films, that's the way that we anticipate it to come to the marketplace. In my opinion, I think that the metaverse will come first in a way of mass adoption by way of augmented reality first. I feel like the metaverse has to be something that's all immersive, that's fully immersive, right? The word metaverse describes a fully realized digital world that exists beyond the one in which we live. It was coined by Neil Stephenson in his 1992 novel, Snow Crash, and the concept was further explored by Ernest Cline in his novel, Ready Player One. When you put your VR headset on, you become fully immersed in this world because that's all that you see. But it's something that's stationary. So I feel like it has to be, in order for something to be like mass adopted, like the phone or like the smartphone, it has to be something that you can take with you all the time that you can incorporate into your day-to-day -day schedule and not have to, not have to be stationary. So something like the, the Oculus or VR headsets is more of the stationary metaverse experience. And because of that, I don't feel like that's gonna be the way of mass adoption. I feel like it will be through something like the camera phone, uh, the camera lens. I believe that the camera lens on the smartphones is gonna be the way that we all become immersed into this metaverse, but I feel like it will be augmented reality. I feel like something like the mass adoption of Pokemon Go and the use of augmented reality was incorporated in this mobility and the exercises and getting out getting out with your friends and walking and going to find these Pokemon and taking pictures, capturing them and playing the game. It was something that was immersive by way of the mobile device. Uh, Pokemon Go couldn't have became what it was, I don't think, if it was released by way of virtual reality headsets and you were playing in some kind of world and you're walking around and stuff like that. I don't think that Pokemon Go would have taken off like that. And I feel like the augmented reality feature is something that is the closest to being pushed out on a ma mass scale. It's something that is pretty affordable because they can introduce this technology into the camera phones and upgrade the chips uh, in our phones this year. And we'll have capabilities of LiDAR technology and things of that nature where we can now interact with our environments in a much different fashion. Um, I wanna go to a video on Mark Zuckerberg talking about augmented reality and the camera being the platform. Because when you think of interoperability, you have to think of an underlying layer that coexists through all different platforms, right? So it's like, if we want blockchains to be interoperable, we have to have some kind of underlying similarity that allows us to swap through different chains, put our collectibles from VV app onto a different marketplace. Everyone dreams of the day of all inclusive interoperability. But in order for augmented reality or, or this, this virtual reality futuristic thing to be adopted on a mass scale, it has to be interoperable. And I think the camera lens is that platform. find a video from I believe 2017 of Mark Zuckerberg talking about um, the idea of launching the augmented reality features by way of a Facebook camera. 
So I want to jump into this and then I want to also expand on how far we've come since the day of this video, as well as what does that mean? Because the more that we get into augmented reality and we start dealing with all of these different assets, augmented reality assets, whether it be a Snapchat filter um, of a crown on your head or a flower girl with a flower crown on her head or some glasses or a spaceship helmet, all of these different Snapchat filters, augmented reality that moves with you. What, whether those are the assets or whether there's premium augmented reality um, assets that are collectibles like the ones in the VV platform or the ones that we are collecting. Whichever ones it is, digital at these augmented reality versions of digital assets will be everywhere. There will be free ones, there will be exclusive ones. And I think that the free versions that we sometimes at VV look at and say, you know, well, what is that going to do to the VV app now that they're giving out free versions of something that I'm collecting? I think the free give out and just the branding of these corporations and the IP of the things that we collect will in time, it will turn our current collectibles into something that becomes vintage, something that becomes more of a one of one, even though it may be a high mint count. So when you look at like, say Marvel, when Marvel posts about on their Twitter about a new NFT release, digital collectible through VV app or something like that, the majority of the comments are people that are um, new to the idea of NFTs, the idea of digital collectibles. And they all feel like, hey, this is crazy. We don't understand it. What's the point? And this is why I think that the free versions of all of these different branded IP augmented reality assets and free games and fully immersive augmented reality Spider-Man games and, and uh, Batman games and all of these different kind of uh, IPs that we collect on Vivi, the free versions of those things being pushed to the masses through something like Facebook or Snapchat filters or TikTok and things like that, that's going to be the painting of the canvas where the idea can grow that these augmented reality characters are valuable. The ones that have numbers on them and that, you know, are actually marked as a collectible by the actual corporation. So um, the, I know there's a bunch of mixed feelings about that, but I want to jump into a Shaq video where you go, you see some of Shaq's um, Instagram posts shows him interacting with a um, augmented reality dancing Spider-Man. Look up. Good job. Good job. Good Smack his booty, Candace. Smack his booty. Some people may see this and feel like it can take the value of the collectible down. And I just feel like we need to understand that augmented reality is something that is very slept on. So much so that we believe virtual reality will be the way that the entire culture is going to embrace the metaverse because augmented reality is being slept on. When you look at the NFTs and collectibles that people have on, um, say, OpenSea, when people release artwork as NFTs or 3D uh, versions, people start to look for a utility of these profile picture collections or of these art collections that drop on OpenSea. And the main, in the first utility that they go for after like merch and um, access to exclusive community and things like that, you'll see a lot of these people start branching into augmented reality. So when we think about augmented reality, we also have to understand that we are early, just like we are early on NFTs, just like the whole idea of the VV platform and the social media aspect and the metaverse aspect and building the, out the VV verse and this ecosystem of selling uh, NFTs from premium IPs. There's so many, there's a plethora of areas in which VV is early, which I believe is going to require patience, you know, and that's the whole reason I'm saying it. The way that this space is rolling out, I feel like VV has a lot of these things covered. Now, how they go about it when in the future, we're all gonna have to wait and see. But as far as the technology and me being in the augmented reality for so many years, like I've been in augmented reality for nearly 10 years and waiting for even just as a fan for years and just using the technology, not so much as, as a developer, 
but waiting for these kinds of concepts in this tech to become mass adopted. Because if it's not mass adopted and it's slept on, then you can have the ability to do all kinds of things with your smartphone. But if you don't know that the tech exists inside of your smartphone, you'll never believe it to be possible. Saying that to say is like a lot of people haven't known about augmented reality or the capability, the augmented reality capabilities of their actual smart device. And if you looked at my channel um, over the nearly a year now, you'll see that I bring up a lot of old applications that I've used years ago that shows the capabilities of augmented reality and what we can do with these augmented reality assets years ago. You know what I mean? Some are five years old. Some of the apps are five years old and, and how they were integrated into stores and um, in toy sections where you had augmented reality characters popping out of the toys to help sell the products. No one knew that it was possible. No one knew about the augmented reality section in the app store. No one typed it in. And for years, these, this tech has um, been sitting around. So to see Vivi come along and push how they've been pushing with this tech, as well as in the NFT space, I do think that it will evolve over time. But I think our mobile devices will be the first our first interaction, our introduction, our onboarding at a, at a mass level into the metaverse. So for example, the distinctions between VR and AR comes down to the devices they require and the experience itself. AR uses a real world setting while VR is completely virtual. VR requires a headset device, but AR can be accessed with a smartphone. AR enhances both the virtual and real world, why VR only enhances a fictional reality. Um, this is the reason why I think it's becoming harder for maybe more traditional thinkers to adopt the idea of the metaverse because they're saying, why would I want to be in a fake world? I want to be in my real world. Why would I want to stay locked up in a room? I want to be, you know, outside in the real world. So. Pokemon Go is a metaverse where through that app and through that camera phone, you were actually in a world where only only the ones with that app can see the world that you guys were in and you seen what that did. So I think that um, that augmented reality definitely is going to be the way we're making the camera the first augmented reality platform. So for those of you who watched us roll out cameras across all our apps and you, know, you wondered what we might have been doing, that was act one. This is act two. Giving developers the power to build for augmented reality in the first augmented reality platform, the camera. All right, so let's take a look at what this is going to look like. All right, so you're going to be able to swipe to the camera, and you're going to start discovering effects that your friends are using and that are relevant to the place you're at nearby and you're gonna be able to scroll through all the effects and there are gonna be a lot of them. Now, we're gonna to start today with all the basic effects that you're used to. Right? Face masks, art, uh, art frames, style transfers. And now, since this is an open platform, you're gonna be able to create your own and instead of having maybe 10 or 20 options to choose from, uh, you're gonna have thousands of options from creators all over the world, from all different kinds of cultures and backgrounds and styles. And this is launching in beta today. Now, this is, this is just the first step, though. So we have, we have a, a lot crazier stuff that I want to show you uh, that's going to be coming soon. So now, for, for real augmented reality, you don't just want the ability to do those tools. You also want the ability to have realistic 3D objects. And in order to do that, uh, you need to have a platform that, has, that gives them precise location, a realistic relationship uh, with objects around them in their environment. So there's an AI technique for doing this called simultaneous localization and mapping, or SLAM. Uh, for those of you in the, the AI community. And um, here's how this works. So you're going to be able to easily create anything you want. You can write a fun message next to your breakfast, and, and it's going to be able to slide onto the table. And since we understand the depth of the table, you saw it was occluded in the right place as it came up. And you're going to be able to pan around, and it's going to maintain its position on the table exactly uh, as if it were a real object in the world. So we can make this more fun. Let's add some, uh, some breakfast sharks uh, swirling around my bowl, uh, some clouds. And you know, there you go. It, it's got the depth right, so when they go behind the bowl, uh, they're, they're occluded. It, it gets the depth of the table and all that. All right, so th there's some pretty involved AI work uh, to, to make this all work. And, and we can do this on a phone. 
So, uh, now, but we're just getting started. This is, this is just the first one that I want to show you. These are the technological foundations for advanced AR. Let's go to the next one. Now, since we're mapping out uh, these scenes in 3D, right, since we have the depth of an image, we can go from taking a still photo to mapping out a whole 3D scene. So this actually is, was, was taken from a 2D still image in our office in Seattle. And from this still photo, we constructed a 3D scene. And now, because it's a 3D scene, we can pan around. How crazy is that? Crazy. <laughs> All right. We can change the lighting. We can turn the lighting down. We can move the lighting from the front of the room to the back. And you can add um, all kinds of effects. You know, we can fill the room up with water if we want. Again, it's got the depth right. Uh, you can add a lot of bouncy balls. We're a fan of bouncy balls. And, uh, and we can fill the room up with Skittles because the future is delicious. That happened with web pages with IP addresses. Now we're at the point where every asset can have a digital identifier. Why that's interesting? It's an enormous market. There will be companies in our generation that are organizing the world's assets. And if you look at organizing the world's information, that produced some giants. Organizing the world's people, giants. Organizing the world's assets is probably two to five orders of magnitude larger of things that want to be connected. And I think the timing for this technology is perfect.